major support for Able to Learn Air. Green Mountain Support Services to empower neighbors with disabilities to be home in the community. Major support also includes Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Out of Vermont's menorah lighting at the state capitol. We'd like to welcome all of our guests. Happy Hanukkah! Happy, Happy Hanukkah. Hanukkah! As we all know, to remember the miracle of Hanukkah, the sages institute the mitzvah of kindling the menorah. However, this needs to be understood. The miracle of the oil, it would seem, is of lesser significance in the military victory. While we focus on the oil, why do we focus on the oil and not the military victory of the Maccabees over the Greeks? The answer allows us to appreciate the essential ingredient that has defined 4,000 years of Jewish history. The military victory was indeed extraordinary, yet it did not last. Just 210 years after the Hanukkah story, the Romans overthrew the Jewish government, and Jerusalem was plundered, Israel was decimated, and the Jewish people were sent into exile. This is the beginning of the exile that we're still in. A period of Jewish powerlessness, dispersion, and persecution, and has lasted almost two millennia. And as we said, we're still in this exile, mentally and also phys as much as physically. Unfortunately, the, mili the, the, the political and military victory of Hanukkah did not last. What lasted was a spiritual miracle. The Jewish faith, like the oil, is inextinguishable. Strength founded on military power alone is temporary. It may endure for long periods of time, but ultimately it will be defeated by a greater power. On the other hand, strength founded on a spiritual light of Torah mitzvot, on goodness, doing deeds of goodness and kindness, a trust in God can never be destroyed. The sages who instituted the celebration of, Hanukkah, of the Hanukkah holiday keenly understood this truth. With her eyes focused on eternity, the rabbis of the Second Temple era grasped that the timeless core of Hanukkah was not the victory of the battlefield alone, but rather the military triumph that led to the rekindling of the sacred light and the moral torch. Surely the military victory was an enormous, significant event, which we are deeply grateful. Yet what makes Hanukkah a vibrant and a heartwarming holiday still today, 2,100 years later, in Montpelier, in Middlebury, in Brattleboro, in Manchester, in Bennington, in St. Albans, in Shelburne, in Jericho, Virgins, in Bristol, and South Burlington, of course, in Jerusalem, is the little cruise of oil that would not cease casting its light and brightness even in the darkest of nights and amongst, amongst the strongest of winds. We are forever grateful to the United States of America a country who has granted us freedom to celebrate Hanukkah openly and with public menorah lightings at state capitals. For more than two millennia, with the onset of the Hanukkah holiday, Jewish families have gathered around their menorahs, seeing their children's faces aglow with a timeless joy. As they gazed at the dancing flames, they could hear the flickering candles sharing their story, a story with a penetrating punchline, the faith the flame of the Jewish faith, the flame of Torah, the flame of mitzvot, the flame of doing deeds of goodness and kindness to your neighbor and those who you don't even know. And the light of redemption that will never be extinguished. We have a, a short program for you, for you all here today. My name is Rabbi Benjamin Murray from Middlebury. We have Chabad of Middlebury there. And we have a few short speakers we light in the menorah and then everyone's welcome to join us inside for hot latkes and donuts. My mom's a rabbis. <laughs> it's beautiful. My wife and Davida and I have some dear friends here in Montpelier. David and Toby run the Yearning for Learning Center. And one of our visiting rabbinical students for the holiday of Hanukkah actually studied with Rabbi Sholem Brat, who was a teacher here from Jerusalem who would come to the Yearning and Learning Center very, on very often occasions to teach Torah. And I'm pleased to welcome Toby to the microphone. Thank you. Thank you, Benjamin. I would like to um, sincerely thank Governor Phil Scott, Lieutenant Governor David Zuckerman, and Mayor Ann Watson, and the entire State House staff for welcoming the Jewish community tonight to the State House on the second night of Hanukkah. 
as Benjamin said, um, I am Rabbi Toby Wiseman. I the direct, direct the Yearning for Learning Center for Jewish Studies in Montpelier, and I'm also the program director for the PJ Library in Vermont. The name Hanukkah means rededication. We commemorate the miracle of over 2,000 years ago. After three years fighting for our, our religious freedom, Jews were able to rededicate the Holy Temple in Jerusalem and light the menorah again. Hanukkah also comes from the Hebrew word chinuch, which means education. And our rabbis, rabbis teach us not to focus, as Benjamin was saying, on the miraculous military victory, but on the spiritual one, where one cruise of pure oil was found to light the menorah. And instead of lasting for one day, it lasted for eight days. The hidden oil that was found represents the hidden infinite light that resides within each of us. Hanukkah teaches us that the most important thing that we can teach ourselves and our children is that each person has an infinite, unique, pure light within them. We all need to be able to share our own unique light, and we need to lift each other up to be able to share our own light. As we light the menorah tonight, and each night of Hanukkah, let us see the light reflected in ourselves and each other, and visualize a time of peace for all people in our day. Thank you, to, thank you so much. We'd like to welcome the mayor of Montpelier, Mayor Watson, to the podium. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, and happy Hanukkah. My name is Ann Watson. I'm the mayor of Montpelier, uh, and I'm delighted to welcome you to Montpelier and to be celebrating uh, with you this evening. During this time of darkness, uh, in what feels like a particularly dark year, it seems especially important to take some time to recognize the light and the goodness within each of us, giving us hope and inspiration to carry on. It's a part of human nature to focus on the darkness. It's easy to lose sight of the good things happening in the world around us, the repair of the world that's going on. So we must make space in our hearts and minds to intentionally recognize the light and the repair going on in the world so that we can see how we can be a part of that healing as well. We must make space to take care of ourselves and to take care of those closest to us if we hope to be in a healthy spot from which we can reach out and care for a broken world. That light within each of us takes tending, self-reflection, and sometimes adjustment as we learn to trust God. And sometimes we could all use a little encouragement. Who has been light in your life lately? Do they know what encouragement they are to you? Is there a way you can let them know that you are grateful for them? Just as deep calls out to deep, so the light in each of us recognizes the light in each other as well. May your house be full of peace and warmth this Hanukkah and on into the new year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor. I have a, another dear friend here, David Zuckerman, who was, I was a neighbor of his for a short time. I'd like to welcome you to the podium, please. Thank you, Binyamin. Um, last year, I think, when I spoke here, I reflected on uh, my father's influence on my life uh, growing up in Brookline and the, um, and the culture and the spirituality of uh, Judaism and... Um, the goodness that is in our people and the wish not only to um, expand upon our own uh, support for each other, but, but having lived through and culturally lived through the persecution that we um, partly reflect on tonight, uh, that we recognize that nobody 
should be persecuted for their religion and their values. And um, today, uh, I am here, uh, sadly, for the first round of holidays, uh, now also without my mother. And so, uh, as this season is upon us, I reflect a lot about her influence also on me and, um, and how our parents, our wise elders, as parents and grandparents, pass on these traditions, pass on our values, and teach us about that light that uh, Mayor Watson was talking about, and the light that we can be for others, and that each one of us is, and daily can be, in how we carry ourselves with our neighbors, and both our friends and the folks we do not know that we pass on the street and how lucky we are in Vermont that when we pass each other on the street, we smile, we share good wishes, and we express and hope for peace for everyone. And so I will reflect on that tonight and over the next many days as we light the candles, and I hope everyone will as well. Thank you, Benjamin. Thank you so much, David. I would like to invite Governor Scott up to the podium to share a few words. Well, good evening. Uh, what a beautiful night tonight, as opposed to maybe a year ago when it was about 15 degrees. Uh, so it's very much a pleasure for me to be here uh, amongst all of you tonight. I'm grateful for the opportunity to join you as we celebrate uh, the second night of Hanukkah. Uh, this is the seventh year uh, we've lit the menorah here at the State House. It's always a great opportunity to get together uh, in solidarity and appreciation for the diverse community we all know and love here in Vermont as we celebrate this special holiday at the most beautiful State House in the United States. Here tonight, we recall Hanukkah's lessons how any group, no matter how small, can make a big difference. How a little bit can go a long way, like a small amount of oil, which shone for eight nights. It reminds us that even when resources are limited, faith and community can help us find the best of ourselves and of each other and make the most of what we have. I think the message of Hanukkah can speak to all Vermonters. The menorah's light inspires us to be part of something bigger than ourselves. Even when our country may seem so divided, so much more divided than ever, and to know that good can emerge even in the darkest of hours. It's also a good time of year for each and every one of us to step back and reflect on how fortunate we really are and all the good that's going on around us. I believe the things we have in common as mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, daughters and sons, friends and neighbors, are what inspires us to do good. Vermonters are known for our deep appreciation for community and our commitment to the most vulnerable. We help each other out in times of need. For example, I'm going to give you an example of something that just happened Thanksgiving Day. The Ludlow Volunteer Fire Department answered a call for an oven fire. Once they arrived on the scene, they determined while there wasn't much damage, they had to inform a mother of three she couldn't use the oven until it was inspected. And remember, this was Thanksgiving Day. But instead of going back to their own families, the volunteer firefighters decided to take things into their own hands and go the extra mile. They ended up taking all her food back to the fire station, cooked it for her, and brought it back to her in time for dinner. This is just one example of many of the sense of community Vermonters share and is part of what makes our state so special. So while we light this menorah tonight, let us commit to doing good. Focus on what unites us rather instead of, uh, instead of what divides us and be part of something much bigger than ourselves. And remember, let's remember the golden rule to treat each other the way we want to be treated with respect and civility. So again, I thank you very much for having me here tonight and I hope you have a very happy Hanukkah. Thank you.
Thank you, Governor. We also have with us the Executive Director of the Jewish Communities of Vermont. She's a dear friend of mine from my days at UVM when she was the Executive Director of UVM Hillel. I'd like to welcome Susan Leff to share a few words. Thank you. I'm honored to be here with you this evening at the State House to light a menorah, which is a pretty amazing thing. I'm going to say just a few words because there have been a lot of words said this evening. Um, I want to remind you as that we light the menorah that it reminds us that our job is to be a light in the world and to pass the light as the shamus passes the light to the, uh, to the other lights, the helper candle. Uh, it's our job to bring light to the world and to pass the light along. Thank you, and happy Hanukkah. And I would also like to recognize Sh Shana Margolin, who's, who's here with us tonight. Um, if It's impromptu, but would you like to share uh, a few words? Thank you. Thank you. I'm Rabbi Shana Margolin. Another woman rabbi in Montpelier, there are many of us. And what I'd like to do is to sing the last verse of my very favorite Hanukkah song, which is called Light One Candle. So those of you who know it, it's on, please. Uh, we have song sheets. Oh, we have song sheets. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. On the song sheet. Well, great. <laughs> well, I'm going to do it from memory, unless there's a song sheet here. That would be good. <laughs> Thank you. Light one candle, yes. Right. Um, if you have a song, she. Yes. It doesn't have this verse. Okay. So we'll do the first verse of Light One Candle. Light one candle for the Maccabee children. Give thanks that their light didn't die. Light one candle for the pain they endured when their right to exist was denied. Light one candle for the terrible sacrifice justice and freedom demand. And light one candle for the wisdom to know when the peacemaker's time is at hand. Don't let the light go out. It's lasted for so many years. Don't let the light go out. Let it shine through our love and our tears. And I want to say, I, I do want to sing the last, the last couple of lines. We have come this far, always believing that justice will somehow prevail. This is the burden, and this is the promise, and this is why we will not fail. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Susan shared a very important mission about, uh, 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 brought up a very important point about the importance of being a lamplighter, which is something that Hanukkah represents. And I wanted to, to take this opportunity to, to welcome Rabbi Raskin, the, um, <clears throat> the regional director of Chabad Lubavitch in Vermont, to the podium to share a few remarks.
Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. First of all, thank you, Benjamin, for being the MC, and uh, Governor Scott, Lieutenant Governor David, and the Mayor. Lots, lots, lots. And Susan. I also want to recognize one of the Chabad rabbis that came all the way from Manchester, Vermont. Menachem and his family, welcome. Quite a few years ago, I had the privilege of listening to a talk that the Lubavitcher Rebbe of less memory gave about Hanukkah. And he said this interesting point, that I think I've repeated many times, and that is, we know when we have dirt on the floor, we get rid of the dirt with a broom. Take a broom, sweep the, the dirt. But here's something very interesting. Darkness, you cannot sweep away with a broom. The only way you could get rid of darkness or change the situation is by bringing in light. In other words, we, we may be saying and screaming and talking about darkness, negative, and things like this, but it's the only way to really change the situation if we ourselves, we do something positive. And when we do positive, that changes the situation. In a deep sense, that is the message of Hanukkah. Because throughout Jewish history, we have a lot of different holidays. And we celebrate them different ways. We know we eat the matzah on Passover, and uh, we eat in the sukkah in Sukkot, different things that we do. On Rosh Hashanah, we blow the shofar. Yom Kippur, we fast. Here's very interesting. How do we, how was it decided by our sages? Going back over 2,200 years ago is by lighting candles, lighting a menorah to increase light. So this is number one. Number one is because we know light is also connected with spirituality, and this is something from all the other things. We, we are going to have food because it cannot be a Jewish event without food. It doesn't work. So there's no question we're going to have latkes, we're going to have donuts, and, and that's the way it is. But we're going to soon say the blessings on the menorah and, and light the candles to increase light. And one more point. Here's different, one, something else that we do different than any other holiday. Last night was the first candle. Tonight will be the second one. Tomorrow the third, till the eight days of Hanukkah, by the eighth day will be eight candles. Here's an interesting message. We increase. <coughs> We got comfortable one day with one light, okay, so we all could go already on vacation. We're also excited, we got one light going. No, second night, second light. And tomorrow, third light. It gives us a, a very important message about increasing, not to be satisfied, but to keep on going and going. So, as the governor was mentioning before, a special story about Vermont, I could tell you from experience being here with my family in Burlington from 1984. I can tell you this is a very, very special state. A very, with, we, we see the openness and the love that exists between each one of us and that should continue and we should be able to be a message for the rest of the country and the lights of Hanukkah should shine forever and we should be able to increase in positive and bring more and more lights into ourselves, into our homes, into our environment. Happy Hanukkah. <laughs> So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Rabbi Raskin and Chabad of Vermont um, for sponsoring this joyous event. And as, as was mentioned before, lighting a candles is a rededication. And the Rabbi taught that the root of correcting society's ills is education. 
that there's a lot of children here today and that from teaching children from a young age that there's a creator in the world, that you have a responsibility, that each one of us has a very unique, tailor-made mission to improve the world. And no one else can complete that mission except for you and you. you only you could complete your mission. And we hope that these lightings and placings of the public menorahs spread light throughout the region. As the Rebbe teaches, as Rabbi Raskin had said, it takes one light to illuminate and, and push away the darkness. I'd like to invite my dear friend David Freed to come up and, and light the menorah. And I would like to invite the governor, the lieutenant governor and mayor to the menorah for the, for the menorah lighting. Happy Hanukkah. Everyone's invited to come up inside into the State House for a, a re for a reception and a children's program. There's hot latkes and donuts waiting for everyone. And before we go, the Rabbi Rabbi Raskin will lead Ma'at Sur. children in. We have a special song uh, leader, uh, Jacob Schiller, who's here with his guitar. He's going to lead us into the capital. And um, hot drinks and cold drinks. There's hot drinks, there's cold drinks, there's um, donuts and latkes and applesauce. And come on in. Major support for Able to Learn Air. Green Mountain Support Services to empower neighbors with disabilities to be home in the community. Major support also includes Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together.